In this lesson, we are going to learn about how to create an Azure Cosmos DB and the resource hierarchy. All right, so first let's go to the Azure portal and learn about how can you create Azure Cosmos DB resources using Azure portal. So go to portal.azure.com and sign in with your credentials. On your home page, on the left hand side, click on create a resource. In the new page, you can either search for Azure Cosmos DB here, or you can find Azure Cosmos DB on the home page itself and click on create. On the select API option page, click on create on the core SQL recommended box. And in the create Azure Cosmos DB account page, enter the basic settings for the new Azure Cosmos DB account. Select the subscription, create a new resource group or pick an existing one. Under the account name, enter a unique name to identify your Azure Cosmos DB account. The name can only contain lowercase letters, numbers, and the hyphen character. It must be between 3 to 31 characters in length. Under location, use the location that is closest to your users to give them the fastest access to the data. Under the capacity mode, select serverless and click on review and create. So validation has been successful. Click on create to create the Cosmos DB account. The deployment is in progress now. All right, so the deployment has been completed. You can click on go to resource, go to your Azure Cosmos DB account. So let's look into how you can add a database and a container. On the left hand side, click on data explorer and click on create a new container. So provide a database ID, leave it as create new and I'm gonna create as to-do list, container ID as items and partition key as category and leave the rest of the values as default and click on OK. Now let me show you how you can add data to your database. So we are gonna perform the same activity under the data explorer, expand the to-do list database and expand the items container and next select items and then select new item. And I'm gonna add the following structure to the document on the right side and you can hit save and now you can select new document again and create and save another document with a unique id and any other properties and values you want and your documents can have any structure because azure cosmos db doesn't impose any schema on your data as always i'm going to go back to the cosmos db we created and i'm going to delete the account to delete it i have to give the name for the cosmos db and delete it. So I'm doing this to save the cost or the credit on my test Azure subscription. All right, so now let's go back to the presentation. So let's look into the resource hierarchy. So the JSON documents stored in the Azure Cosmos DB SQL API are managed through a well-defined hierarchy of database resources. The Azure Cosmos DB hierarchical resource model consists of set of resources under a database account each addressable via a logical and stable URI. A set of resources is referred to as a feed in Azure Cosmos DB. A database account is associated with a set of databases and a fixed amount of large object storage for attachments. You can create one or more database account by using your Azure subscription. A database is a logical container of document storage partitioned across collections and it is also a user's container. A collection is a container of JSON documents and the associated JavaScript application logic. A document is a user-defined JSON content and by default, no schema needs to be defined nor do secondary indexes need to be provided for all the documents added to a collection. Under stored procedure, application logic written in JavaScript that is registered with a collection and executed within the database engine as a transaction. In the Azure Cosmos DB SQL API, databases are essentially containers for collections and collections are where you place individual documents. A collection is intrinsically elastic. It automatically grows and shrinks as you add or remove documents. What about partitioning? Azure Cosmos DB provides containers for storing data called collections, graphs, 
or tables. Containers are logical resources and can span one or more physical partitions or servers. The number of partitions is determined by Azure Cosmos DB based on the storage size and throughput provision for a container or set of containers. If you are already familiar with the shredding pattern, the idea of dynamic partitioning is not very different. So how can you implement partition? So let's look at partitioning implementation. A logical partition is a partition within a physical partition that stores all the data associated with a single partition key value. Partition ranges can be dynamically subdivided to seamlessly grow the database as the application grows while simultaneously maintaining high availability. When a container meets the partitioning prerequisites, partitioning is completely transparent to your application. Azure Cosmos DB handles distributing data across physical and logical partition and routing query requests to the right partition. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we are going to learn about how to implement IaaS based solutions. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.